afternoon. Um, it is 329, so we'll wait just another minute for some folks to be joining. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to those of you that are here on time and uh, even just a little bit ahead of schedule, so we appreciate that for sure. Uh, we will try to keep things uh, pretty close to a tight hour today. And uh, just as a note here, um, we are, of course, recording these uh, recording these uh, showcases. So uh, today is the second showcase uh, in a series of five showcases. I will, I will say this at the end as well, but I'll, I'll say it here too for those that are on the call. If you missed yesterday's showcase and you're not sure somebody from your school attended, it is well worth your time uh, to go back and, uh, and watch that recording. You can find that on the STEM LD website. Uh, we'll drop the uh, the link to the website in the chat. Um, yesterday uh, was a was a showcase that was similar to today's in terms of its its length and its intention and kind of what we're trying to accomplish uh, with that. Uh, but there's a couple of different partners on that that are uh, that are worth going to uh, going to check out. So uh, that was uh, U University of Alabama at Huntsville, um, and then also uh, Walter State Community College, uh, who are both partners on the STEM LD grant. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you, Brashe. Brashe has dropped that into the chat. So uh, as you can see, my name is Law Loving. Uh, some, some or all of you have heard from me or, or interacted with me at some point. Um, I work on the STEM LD grant uh, primarily with our partners uh, in sort of a, a workforce and, uh, and career readiness facing uh, role. I've got some of my uh, colleagues on the call as well. So I want to introduce them, but there are some other nice longer foundation folks on here. Uh, that'll be helping me out along the along the way. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes here. So um, there will be a survey at the end of this uh, end of this session uh, that we'll we'll throw the link in the chat. Um, you you're required uh, to have a representative from each of your schools here at at these different showcases. It may be the same person for all of them. Uh, it might be a different person or different sets of people. If you want credit for your school having attended, please fill this this survey out. It just takes a second. It's really just asking for name and email. And a couple of other things uh, that helps us say that, hey, yep, your school attended and we won't uh, come pester you to, to go back and watch the recordings. Um, just as a reminder, uh, what we're doing uh, as part of these showcases is really introducing some of our partners on STEM LD. These are folks that are offering some really fantastic things in the professional learning space, uh, in the out of school time space for your students, and then also in the advanced coursework space. So each partner brings a little bit of something different to the table. Each is very much an expert in their, their niche of, uh, of the STEM world. Um, but there's the opportunity for you after you've, after you've heard from all the partners to, uh, to actually develop a partnership and create a partnership. We can support that uh, through STEM LD financially. So you won't actually pay for any of this. Uh, but it's a way for you to, to enhance um, not only your own expertise, but also your experiences that you can offer to your students as well. Um, so without further ado, we'll, we'll kick things off today. I think TNTP is up first. Uh, we've got, it uh, looks like three, three TNTPers on the phone that I think are going to be presenting today. So I'll just introduce them quickly and say uh, we have uh, Elizabeth Nagley, uh, who um, is very much involved with our TNTP science efforts. Uh, we have Krista Beebe, who is involved with our TNTP uh, math efforts, and then we have Shereen Faroudi, who is involved with our TNTP CTE efforts. So um, I'll kick it back over to them. I think y'all should be able to share your screens if you want to do that, and uh, thank you all for, uh, for presenting today. Well, I cannot share my screen. Can you just check the settings on that? I'll, yep, I can fix that very quickly. Let's see. Maybe. Brashe, I might need your help on this. I was able to do this yesterday. Make Elizabeth a co-host, please. It let, it let me make co-host yesterday. It's not letting me do so today. I think we got some oh, folks popping on. I got on it anyways. now. I think we're okay. good. Good deal. Okay. All right. Um, good afternoon, y'all. Um, we are excited to be here today with you to talk about TNTP, um, what we do at TNTP as an organization, and what we are offering in our deep dive partnerships, um, what we've been doing this year, and then some updated offerings for next year as well. Uh, I think Law already did some team introductions here, so I'm joined by Krista, 
we will talk to you about our middle school math program with Shireen. We'll talk about our CTE programming. Um, and then Katrina is, is here as well. You may come across Stephen and some of your work with the STEM LD grant. Um, they both work in partnership with the Nice Munger Foundation doing some technical assistance for our grant. Um, here is how we're going to use our time today. We're going to talk a little bit about who TNTP is and, and the work that we do in Tennessee um, and nationally. And we have three separate deep dive partnership offerings, which are um, the audience are our specific groups of teachers. So we've got a middle school science deep dive partnership, um, a middle school math deep dive partnership, and one for high school CTE. And there's some commonality in those, which we'll talk about. Um, but they also are really unique and, and exactly what the um, partnership looks like is different. So we'll go through each of those individually as well. And so as you're listening today, um, you may find that one of these or two or a combination of the three is best based on the needs of your school needs and interests at your school. And so you don't have to opt into all three. You can really just choose whatever you think is going to best serve your, your teachers, your students, your community. So you might have encountered TNTP in the past um, through some of the other work that we do in the state of Tennessee, um, or you may be familiar with our most recent national report, which was called the Opportunity Myth. Um, TNTP is a national nonprofit that was founded by teachers, and we work alongside ed the educators that we serve in school districts and in, um, in schools and in district offices. Our mission is to end the injustice of educational inequality by providing excellent teachers to the students who need them the most um, by advancing policies and practices that ensure that effective teaching is happening in every classroom. Um, we Here's a map that shows some of the partnerships that TNTP has with districts across the state of Tennessee. This is actually from July of 2021. So what's not included on this map is all the partnerships that we have this year um, with STEM LD. Uh, but it shows the work that, T that TNTP has been doing over the past 15 years um, all across the state to work towards this mission in partnership with schools and school districts. Uh, TNTP has also done extensive work um, with the Department of Education on state level initiatives. Um, including one initiative in 2018 where we worked with the Tennessee Department of Education to create the vision for excellent CTE instruction. Um, so we're very familiar with the communities in which you live and you serve and the unique challenges um, and uh, benefits that come in serving the students that you do. And so before we get into the like logistical operational details of what the TNTP um, DJ partnerships look like, we wanted to take a second to just frame um, the challenge that we're trying to solve um, through SMLD and in, in, in this partnership. And so the table here shows some data of employment in STEM occupations in 2020 and projected um, employment in 2030. And so if you take a look at the table, you can see that the although the share of STEM jobs is smaller when compared to non STEM jobs, they're growing at a faster rate than um, total number of jobs or non-STEM related um, careers. And if you look at the final column in the table, you can also see that STEM occupations, in STEM occupations, the median salary is more than double of non-STEM occupations. And this data is coming from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And it includes all, um, all levels of occupation, including entry level jobs for our recent high school graduates. Um, another set of data here to illustrate what we're trying, the challenge we're trying to adjust, address. Um, so if you look at the table of the bar graphs on the left, you can see that over the past several years, the number of students that have expressed an interest in STEM related occupations has been consistent at around 50%. So we've got these jobs where kids have a higher earning potential after high school. Um, we can see that a lot of kids are interested in these jobs. But then when we take a look at how many of those students are actually prepared to access those jobs, we can see there's a big gap between the number of kids that are interested and the number of kids that are ready. Um, this data is coming from an ACT report on STEM readiness in 2000 and published in 2018 with the past couple of years of data. 
And um, one measure that they take a look at is this ACT, ACT STEM readiness benchmark. And that is the um, average ACT math and ACT science score. Um, and so kids who reach this level of readiness on that benchmark body's average two scores are um, at least 50% likely to earn a B or higher in a post high school STEM related course. So this is national data, but I do have um, local data, Tennessee data for you to look at as well, which really mirrors the national trends. We see about 50% of students expressing interest in STEM career and then the dark blue bar on the very bottom on the right, 18% reaching that level of STEM readiness on the ACT. So TNTP's deep dive partnerships is one way that you can work to address this gap in STEM readiness at your school. Each of our partnerships, again, middle school science, middle school math, high school CTE, um, they're a little different, but they all focus on the same core ideas. First, um, teachers will engage in learning opportunities that help them to build a shared vision of excellent instruction in math, science, and CTE. Teachers then get access to tools and resources that reflect the best practices aligned with this shared vision for excellent instruction. And then they have opportunities to engage in professional development, to learn from each other, um, and get support on implementation of how they can work towards vision. And um, like I said, you could choose one, two, or three of these, depending on the needs of your school. We also know that there are a lot of districts that are already have partnerships with TNTP that were shown on the maps. Like I know that Sullivan County has a great partnership already with TNTP math. And so this, you may not want to um, double down. It wouldn't be a good use of resources to double down on TNTP math in both of these, but you might want to pick science or CTE as a complement to the work that you may already be doing with TNTP. Okay, so that is an overview of all three of the partnerships and what we're trying to um, address in our work. I get to keep going next and talk about um, middle school science, which is which is the partnership that I um, run for TSDP and that is, is my my passion. Uh, so, science um, in our in our science deep dive partnership. We are focused on providing training and support that helps teachers to take their instruction to the next level by implementing high leverage instructional strategies in science. Um, in year one, we heard that teachers were familiar with the three-dimensional framework for science instruction. They know the cross-cutting concepts, engineering practices, and um, disciplinary core ideas, but they weren't sure how to put them into practice. And um, when we asked about the challenges of bringing this to life in their classroom, we heard a variety of things, but one of the things we've heard the most often goes back to the lack of instructional materials that exist for core curriculum for middle school science and the time it takes to have to create those materials and then prepare for that instruction every day on their own. So the goal of this middle school science partnership is to provide teachers with access to training and the materials that are going to put students at the center of daily instruction by empowering them with high quality core curriculum resources. We are doing that through um, a focus on implementation of Open Syed. And Open Syed is a free open source middle school science core curriculum. It's a complete curriculum for grades six through eight. It is one of the only um, curricula that's out there right now for middle school science that has earned this um, next gen science consortium badge for high quality science curriculum. Uh, I was a career science teacher, coach, district level science person. This is like the best. This is truly the best that's out there for middle school science uh, that we could be putting in front of kids right now. Full disclosure is that it is not a perfect alignment to Tennessee science standards, but it is pretty darn close and good enough. There are at least two units at every single grade level that teachers could implement in their classroom that would align to the demands of the standards and to TCAP and they would have to do very minimal um, revisions too. So this is a great product to, to bring into your school, even if you can't do it like with fidelity perfectly in the sequence that it's been designed to, um, to, to follow. So um, I've been talking for a while. I could talk about this all day, but I also thought it'd be good to pause here and show a short video from Open Science. So you can hear from some teachers and some educators that have implemented this and get an idea of what this program is about. And Shereen, go just give me a thumbs up once it's going or thumbs down if the sound doesn't play. 
What is our question right now that we are trying to answer? Open Syed is just a whole different way of thinking. Does the speed affect damage? So the faster it goes, does it make more damage? And this really allows kids to be the, the knowers. You need nine sections, because you're gonna do nine tests today. Accuracy, accurate answers, human error. We're always looking for that. They're able to kind of lead these investigations. The beginning of our unit starts out with an anchoring phenomenon. And the anchoring phenomenon really drives us through the entire unit. This one happens to be cell phones breaking, and that's really relevant to these kids. And so they pose some questions, um, we do some observations, and we really investigate the questions that they have. You're expected to talk a lot more in this class than any other class that I had. Thumbs up, thumbs down, like we're good. Okay, you may go ahead and do your tests for your slow rolls and then add your crackers and start recording some data. So on our driving question board, as we learn things, we check them off. Um, can we prove it with evidence? It's more fun. It's not just talking about what you did in a book or something like that. You get to experience it hands-on. Kids that may have discipline issues in other rooms don't have them in here typically. Oh my goodness! We got graham crackers flying everywhere. They tell me their brains hurt at the end of this class because they're like, you don't let us just sit here. You make us think. Here we go, lesson two. So we finished our anchoring phenomenon routine. Training for Open Syed is really exciting. Um, it's teachers who are innovative and forward thinkers coming together. Not just be given a curriculum and say, here, implement this. They actually get like in-depth training on it. They get to go through it. And then at the end of it, they get to give feedback on how to make it better. The materials we build reflect the teacher's voice. We have teachers on every design team for these units and the Every unit goes through not only the development and then the field testing, but then we take back all of the information that we've gotten from the field tests and try and revise it. One of the things we're really excited about with Open Syed is that it's a free and open curriculum resource. So it really provides districts all across the state an option that suits their budgets nicely. I think science has become boring through textbooks and Open Syed brings it to life again. And so I hope that kids come in here excited to see what we're doing. No breakage. <laughs> ready to plan something new. And, and right now we're breaking stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
A, middle grades mathematics content is the foundation for everything that kids are going to do um, in high school and beyond. Like this is the last bit of real math learning that they do before they go into applying that mathematics through algebra and geometry and all that in high school. So middle grades mathematics is super important. Um, this is also really important because math classrooms today look a lot different than they did when I was in school. So um, that might be true too for you and the teachers in your, in your school. Like I remember my math class consisted of my teacher standing in front of the classroom telling us step-by-step -step how to get an answer to a math problem. I would copy down the, their steps and I practiced those steps on the odd numbered problems in my book, right? I didn't really learn anything about numbers, how they played together, why formulas worked. Um, and I didn't have an opportunity to really think and reason for myself. Typically there was one solution path and it was the teacher's way, right? That, that's how we did mathematics. Today, the expectation is very different. Um, kids are expected to do most of the thinking in math classrooms. They're allowed to notice, wonder, make connections, discover patterns, and write generalizations to help them make sense of the math they are learning. The teacher, it's, it's no longer really about them pouring knowledge into the students, but rather they're there to facilitate and ask questions and, and really listen to how students are thinking about problems. They encourage students to explore multiple solution paths and help them to take what they've discovered and apply it to new situations. This type of learning is really engaging, relevant, and impactful. Students in these classrooms typically enjoy mathematics and are more likely to persevere through tough problems. Now, many of our teachers had a similar math experience to mine. And many teachers are also comfortable teaching the way that they were taught. Letting kids do the thinking in math class is different and can be a little intimidating. And that's where we come in. So next slide, please. So the TNTP Math Deep Dive engages principals, assistant principals, instructional coaches, and any other instructional leaders that you have on your campus um, in the important work of ensuring that teachers are equipped with the instructional strategies and materials needed to empower kids to think like mathematicians. So we will work together to put cycles in place to support strong math instruction on your campus. To accomplish this, we will have opportunities for professional learning, for both teachers and instructional leaders. Uh, we'll do shared classroom walks with a member of the TNTP team and support in developing school strategy for math instruction. So we can tackle questions like, what does strong instruction look like and how can I support teachers in improving their instruction? What are some high leverage math strategies? What should I be thinking about regarding our math curriculum? And how do I ensure strong pathways to success in Algebra One and beyond? Um, so this deep dive partnership is really a, a, a team effort between the teachers on your campus, your instructional leadership team, and TNTP will work together to accomplish and, and tackle some of these questions. Next slide, please. So we are, um, our goal here is to create classrooms where all kids can become competent mathematical thinkers and problem solvers. And if that's something that your school is excited to work on, like we would love to, to go on this journey with you. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Shireen. Thank you, Krista. Um, we are gonna chat for just a couple more minutes about high school CTE. So um, those of you who are on here who are representing a high school campus or um, a district with um, some CTE offerings. This is, this is uh, a possibility for you in terms of a partnership. Um, next slide, please, Elizabeth. So um, I wanted to take a moment to sort of name um, why we would uh, partner with STEM-related CTE pathways. So for those of you who have started the orientation videos, you may have seen, you might need to zoom in a little bit, Elizabeth, if you're able to, because these are so much smaller in real life. Um, these these um, data points that you see on the screen are uh, from a recent report produced by the Georgetown Center on Education and the Workforce. And what you see here is that there is value, an undeniable value in the STEM-related CTE pathways. 
So we're looking at here the students who go on from graduating high school and earn an associate's degree in in all of the different CTE career clusters that are available in Tennessee. And what you'll see at the top where the income is larger than average um, are that a number of the CTE pathways that are STEM related are featured. So you've got engineering, architecture, healthcare, construction, manufacturing, transportation, all of these different career clusters that are represented um, and the median entry level income of these um, are on this slide. So on the next slide, you'll see that for students who graduate from high school and go straight into a career or receive a certification in a STEM related CTE um, field, you'll also see that they can earn um, a pretty wide range of entry level salaries and they have generally a higher median income. Um, I, I don't like to point out, but it, you see where education is there if you just go to get a, a, a teacher certification or a teacher assistant certification, whereas students who earn the um, other CTE STEM related certificates really have earning potential from jump. So that's why we're spending the time on this deep dive partnership and specifically in high school, that's the last at bat students get in a K through 12 system to support them in this career pathway. Next slide, please. So as Elizabeth said at the top of our presentation, um, we worked with the state um, of Tennessee in designing their vision of excellent CTE instruction. And those of you who are supervising or directing CTE programs on your campus may be familiar with this um, visual. Accompanying this visual is a rubric that highlights different activities student look for and teacher look for that you will see during the orientation videos but that we dive into far more deeply in this deep dive partnership. Specifically on the left hand side where you see focused, rigorous, and relevant instruction, those are the three hallmarks of strong programs of study, and those are the three areas that we'll dive into in depth in the deep dive partnership. Next slide, please. So similarly to um, the math partnership, we will have a three session professional development series for your STEM related CTE teachers. Um, and we offer some CTE support around developing the systems for school strategies in these spaces. So some of the questions that we will tackle or could tackle are questions around determining which programs of study and courses to offer. Um, and how they align with labor market indicators, um, what role your industry-based advisory councils could and should play in developing focused, rigorous, and relevant coursework, and finally, how can the intro and capstone courses prepare students for ongoing learning in a CTE program of study? So if your campus has a CTE program and you offer the STEM related CTE clusters, they don't have to be just the ones that are named STEM, clearly um, ones that are in transportation, healthcare, those are all STEM related, even if they aren't necessarily in the STEM bucket. So if you're interested in having that professional learning support for the teachers, but also the support for setting up the systems in place on your campus, um, please, when, when you get the survey from Nice Wonger for deep dive supports, please keep in mind that we're here for you. Next slide. All right, Mia, one more. Perfect, thank you. So TNTP is offering these three different deep dive supports that are focused on the high leverage areas of strong instruction and high quality materials. Each deep dive is support is structured a little differently, but the goal is the same. 
we will support you in creating meaningful and rigorous STEM classroom experiences for students at your school. So I think we have like a couple minutes left, Law, maybe. So if anybody has any questions, um, you can come off mute or type them in the chat. So while uh, while questions are, are coming in, uh, do keep in mind, of course, we do have another presentation uh, just like right after this one here in just a second uh, with uh, if I had a hammer. Um, as, as was mentioned, uh, what we'll do is go through the rest of these showcases uh, over the next few days. Our last showcase is next Tuesday. Uh, so we've, we've got uh, we had one yesterday. We have this one today. And we have three more to come. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll have the opportunity for you to circle back with folks at your school and start partnering up with partners that make sense for you. Um, if you've already partnered, uh, if you're part of cohort one and so you've been a part of STEM LD for a little while, uh, you'll have the opportunity to reaffirm or switch partners um, and then also to potentially pick new partners. And if you're in cohort two, if this is your first year in STEM LD, you know, you'll be picking uh, from, from scratch basically. And so this will be your first opportunity to, to pick a deep dive partner. Um, if you're on the call today and you're hearing this information and you're thinking this sounds great, but uh, it may not be for me specifically um, because it just doesn't necessarily align with your particular field, please, please make sure that you actually bring it back to the folks at your school. You're just here as a representative. So um, we want this to hit, hear, uh, to hit the ears of the relevant folks, even if it's just a matter of passing along the link. Uh, so we do have something in the chat here. Um, this is probably a little bit of a loaded question, uh, but uh, Elizabeth and Krista and Shireen, you guys wanna just take a quick stab at that? Sure, I think mine's the only curriculum focus, so it's probably for me. Um, we have got four days of training in June for new cohort, um, new schools in the cohort. They do uh, like a real deep dive into the um, program where they get to like be students and learn the unit that they then get the materials to go teach. Um, so it's four days, the third week of June, June 21st through the 24th. Um, and then um, we'll have school visits uh, during the course of the year where we'll get differentiated support and teachers can opt in to office hours and things like that as much support as they want. The bulk of training um, would happen during the summer and we wouldn't expect teachers to really be missing school um, or have any additional full group PD opportunities during the school. Very good question. Yeah, thank you for asking that. Um, in the interest of time, uh, because I know we're starting to, to move into the second half of the, of the hour here, um, if you do have questions for the TNTP folks, feel free to drop them in the chat. You can either put them in the, in the everyone group or you can just message them directly via the chat. I think we've left that open. Um, but, uh, but thank you to the TNTP team for, for presenting that. Um, and we're looking forward to the good partnerships that'll come out of this. Uh, I'm gonna kick it over to uh, Perry Wilson and Don Swain. Uh, they are coming to us from If I Had a Hammer, and they are the experts in all things um, uh, measurement and math and fractions. Uh, they'll explain it a lot better than I can, um, so I will, uh, I'll let them uh, take it from here. I do think that you guys have co-host ability, so you should be all set to share your screen. That's it. Okay, thank y'all for uh, joining us today. Um, I think really after following Krista, the middle school math to me, I think she kind of wrapped it up really good talking about the, the importance of that. And uh, so Dawn is, Dawn's the brains of the operation. She keeps everything organized. She's got a background in uh, television production and she helps us with all of the the professional development. So she's gonna she's gonna help me run through this real quick. Yes. So let's see. Just slide it down here. Okay. Um so this is a uh whoa. I'll, I'll, you're gonna I'll run that. Okay, there you go. you're gonna help me. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is an applied mathematics program, and uh I call it K through J instead of K through 12. We started working with prisons. I'm actually going down to Lexington. Tennessee tomorrow to work with some inmates that we help with the, the mathematics to pass the certifications going into apprenticeship programs or onto the jobs. But um, really we're trying to focus what has been this, uh, the elementary school mathematics of what I think is the foundation of it. We work with a lot of high schools because when you, we work with a lot of construction companies, uh, advanced manufacturing, 
And students' ability to understand measurement is pretty frightening right now. And with uh, learning loss and the rest of it, that's kind of what we're trying to focus is help with that. Um, so just a little bit about me. I couldn't read till I was an adult. Uh, I've got dyslexia and learn math on the job as a carpenter. Uh, first two people that taught me math, like I could understand it. Uh, their names were Sunny and Red. They were my bosses. And it was just like, just teaching me just really what the math looked like and applied. And I was a carpenter, didn't even realize I was doing mathematics. I thought mathematics was in a book. And I, I, could, was, I couldn't do it out of a book. And when I got to apply it and work with a carpenter, I could get it. So we worked with over a million students. We worked with over 30 science museums around the country, 60 colleges and you know, million children. So um, really just wanted to, to talk a little bit about how am I ever gonna use this mathematics? So what we're doing is we teach fractions, measurement, scaling, we go into architectural design, uh, we build houses big enough that 30 students can get in a house, which we're going to be doing with Walter State. Um, to immerse a student into mathematics, to me, is what it's about, because there's really only five things you can do in math the way I teach it. You add, subtract, multiply, divide, and then there's just the language of math, and we just make that physical. Perimeter, you add. Area, you multiply. But when you're physically working with it, understand how it works, then the math starts becoming real to the students. But the, the real foundation piece, if you don't understand fractions, you're not going to understand measurement. You're not going to understand scaling. And that is a huge piece. And you can get answers correct in school, but then when you need to be able to apply them to the real world, you're not getting that. So I wanted to show you a little video first of this is the way we teach fractions, because when you're actually working on the job, there's not an algorithm on a job, you've got to know the math. So this is just a quick little video to kind of show what we expect from our students. Watch how these fifth grade Lansdowne Elementary students add three fractions with uncommon denominators in their heads with their eyes closed. So what is three fourths plus one eighth plus Two sixteenths. Oh what is one half plus one eighth plus one sixteenth? Eleven sixteenths. Eleven sixteenths. Now, how'd you come up with that? I know that one half is equal to four eighths. So I put four eighths there, took away the half. Okay. I slid this eighth over and I got five eighths. Right. And I know that there are ten sixteenths in five eighths. And I slid this one over and got eleven sixteenths. Watch how these fifth grade Lansdowne Elementary students add four. So I, I'm trying to get law over on this with me, but <laughs> I think the name STEM being dyslexic, it's wrong. Science, technology, engineering, and math, we need to flip this dude around and call it METS because if we don't do the math, we're not doing that other stuff. I think we've got to be able to start with math and be able to show with these partnerships that Nicewanger's putting together, we want to be the math part that's really helping you understand the engineering and the rest of it that, that we're building upon. And so um, when you're breaking it down from the fractions, measurement and scaling, and you're looking at it as a whole, first of all, the students, why do we need it? We need to show them how they're gonna actually use it and apply it immediately. And, um, but when you go back um, kind of the, the back office part of mathematics, Vanderbilt was involved in a $10 million research project. And when you just look at how foundational the fractions are to understanding mathematics, how it's based in the workforce, it, it's critical. And I, and I think uh, we've got a Hammer Institute at the University of West Alabama now. And part of what we're doing is trying to do some real research on students' ability to actually measure. And when you look at 
the, uh, for example, in Nashville, with all of the, we're here in Franklin, just south of Nashville, uh, a plumbers association has quit working with the high schools because the students are coming out and they can't read a ruler and they're putting all this, all this time and energy and effort trying to help and these fundamentals aren't there and they would just assume wait and try to help them when they get out of school when they're on the job. My thought is if we can help them when they're in school and help that, that we're gonna be focused more on what these careers are all about. Um, that group you saw doing the fractions with their eyes closed, um, were, they've been involved in a $200,000 research project with the University of Kentucky. And Lansdowne Elementary, uh, they are, what is it, how much, what's the free, the free reduced um, lunch was, 80, yeah, 82%. 82 and there were 36 different languages spoken. So I was like, that was the kind of school I was looking for. So they had a 99% uh, gains, average gains on the math test in mathematics. And so um, part of what we're trying to do is when I'm teaching, I like all the kids up and moving and talking on like a loud classroom. I wanna see everybody up and moving and collaborating. But we go through the fractions measurement and then we worked with the Memphis Grizzlies in Memphis, we're working with 108 schools there. Now these were fifth graders. We did a citywide architectural design competition for fifth graders. And these houses are one fourth inch equals uh, one foot in scale. But as they start going through it, their imagination, we have trampoline rooms, helipads, we've got all kinds of stuff. I don't care what you're doing, but you've got to be able to understand what the area, the perimeter, of, it's like an art class to me. You start through the design, you understand it mathematically, you're creating, your, it's not my dream house, it's your dream house, but I love this one. With the indoor swimming pool, instead of a diving board, they got a bridge over the pool. So it's just, it's really what the students are seeing. And this was the citywide winner's house. And the master bedroom in this huge house is only 13 by 13. But we've got a basketball court, a sauna, there's a uh, mini golf, a bowling alley, swimming pool. Back over here, you got a McDonald's, a Burger King, and a CC's pizza in the house. So I don't know, I don't care what you put in it, but I need to know what's the area, what's the perimeter, what's the volume, what's the what's mathematically what's going on with what you're creating. And then, you know, we've just worked with a lot of corporate sponsors. The Grizzlies were awesome. We got to give trophies away. They got to meet the players and get down on the the floor, and it was something that we got a lot of kids interested and inspired with. But you want to talk a little bit about how we're actually doing this, Dawn? Yes. Yeah, so our online curriculum is uh, we'll walk you step by step through uh, everything. Uh, we've created um, apps. We created videos, and uh, you'll see on the next slide. But the videos were actually uh, directed by an Emmy award-winning director of Sesame Street. And um, we felt it was very important to always keep the fidelity high and in its simplest message. So, yeah, and, and a lot of what we're doing with the students physically learning the fractions is they need to be able to create their own problems, solve their problems. And I don't like it. Just, this is just me. I can't make the whole, I can't make anybody do anything. But the way I like to teach it, is if you're, we like to start with comparing fractions and equivalent fractions. And until you can teach me that and explain it to me and create your own problem, I really don't want you to move forward. Because what's bigger, 11 sixteenths or three fourths? You can do, what are they, it's, what do they call it? Oh man, uh, butterfly deal, whatever it is, where, where you're, you're, oh, yeah. you're crossing we'll these fractions up and you Body. get the answer right. You have no idea how or why that works, but when it's physical, the students can now articulate what they see and what it is. Um, but yeah, this was this was when I met Dawn, um, I had created a series of videos. I was working on these videos. And then she introduced me to her friend, Steve Feldman, who directed Sesame Street. And Stevie just told me, he was like, man, these are awful what I've created. You know, it, didn't, it didn't have the rhythm to it and the rest of it. So we've got a whole series of animated videos that what it does is there it's self-paced it's self-directed it does the articulation of the math it shows you physically and visually what's going on 
And then the students are actually going through physical activities right. as we move through. And it doesn't matter whether you're in third grade or whether you're in tw 12th grade. Right. It still applies. It still applies to the same piece. And then uh, you want to talk about the builds? Yes. So we do um, a two-hour field trip experience. Uh, Walter State Community College is uh, our partner hub uh, for the Nice Wonger uh, STEM LD grant. And uh, Anita Ricker is the one heading it up. She's head of workforce development. They are doing a kickoff build on March the 9th. They already have a school already signed up to participate. However, uh, Anita did say if you want to send one or two representatives from your school, you can contact her and I have her contact information on this next slide right here. Um, but if you're interested in viewing the build, uh, you can call her in RSVP and she'll be glad to accommodate you. And then, and then for me, kind of the last part is, well, we'll work with the University of Alabama Birmingham and they just had done an evaluation on 400 sixth graders. And their evaluation was they're working at the third grade level math right now. And so um, I think, across the country, what we're seeing, and it's easier to assess what's going on with the little ones versus like um, in your area with Eastman Chemical, I mean, they are really feeling it as, the, as they're graduating, moving out, trying to be employed right now, what deficits there are in the mathematics. So I think what happens, what we're trying to do, and, I, and I, to me, this is what the whole STEM LD piece is about, Leveling education, when you're leveling something physically, if one end is down, you know, you're, we're, we're continuing to level and we're moving down right now as, our, as everything's moving down with, as far as uh, our proficiency. But if we, when you're plumbing as a carpenter, you're going from the top and you're coming down and you're seeing where our goals and our objectives are. So for me, I don't care if it's third graders or their inmates. There's a certain baseline of mathematics you have to know to be able to apply and understand what, what that is. So what we're doing now is actually on the process of trying to become on the eligible training provider list as a pre-apprenticeship program for the state of Tennessee and Alabama and moving into Georgia with the work we're doing in Atlanta. But ultimately, I think what you're going to get with any of the partners uh, working with NICEWANGER is we're all trying to like to me, plumb this education piece. We're all trying to set high goals and objectives, let the students kind of see what the end game is and how it's gonna to apply to their life. So we're really proud to be a part of this. Our professional development is we're here for you. So if you need more help, whatever it is, we're gonna make sure that uh, you've got that. Our, our videos are very, very, uh, powerful and, and help with the professional development and the training, but we provide PD. Anytime a teacher needs some help, we'll help. If you've got some kids that are really struggling, I would love to help them. So that's part of what I, I, I got in this working with kids. So I'm trying to learn how to run a business with it too. But at the same time, that's what our real goal here is. If you've got students that need some help, you have some teachers that need some help, we're here to support you. Well, thanks, Hammer Team. Uh, I appreciate appreciate y'all being here and uh, and some of the kind words. Um, so uh, a couple of things that I would maybe tack on there. Um, you know, Perry touched on uh, the the Hammer Team's willingness to be flexible, and uh, and so if you're thinking about a partnership with them, it does not mean that every single math teacher you have has to partner with Hammer. They could. Uh, you could partner with Hammer outside of the math disciplines. Um, but uh, but there's certainly the opportunity to pick and choose, uh, you know, who who uh, partners in terms of which grade levels. I think you can probably see the applicability across the the several grade levels we serve as part of STEM LD. So uh, whether that's sixth graders all the way up through seniors, um, there's there's certainly some applicability there. And I did want to mention uh, since they talked about the uh, the Walter State date on March the 9th. Um, that that is an opportunity for for one uh, middle school to to participate. But if you choose to partner with Hammer, uh, your schools, your students will also have that the opportunity to to do those Hammer builds. Uh, we, we've built in funding as part of STEM LD to support that. 
So we'll have some hub sites around the region and we'll continue to add those to the life of the grant. Uh, we've got a couple of them now that'll be hosted at Walter State campuses. We'll be trying to spread them out geographically so that um, they are accessible and a little bit closer for field trip purposes. Um, but that is an opportunity to really think creatively to not only interact with, uh, with Hammer and the things that they're bringing to the table, but also to get your students even in middle school on college campuses uh, throughout the area. So there's, there's some real strong synergy there between uh, Walter State and Hammer in this, for this particular uh, partnership. And uh, we're, we're really excited about the things that have grown um, just sort of organically out of, out of that. So um, can I say one more thing, Law? Go ahead. Yeah, well, one thing with the house builds, just for clarification, we're going to build a house in about two, two and a half hours, big enough the whole class can get in. It's disassembled and rebuilt with the next class. We're teaching these principles behind that, but they've got nail bags and hammers and goggles. They don't have a teacher. They have a boss. If they don't listen, they're going to get fired. So it's like a real world situation we do with the students, but it's set up on a field trip. So if you want to bring groups into Walter State, mm -hmm. that they're there to set up and build and go through the program with them individually. So any questions for uh, for uh, Dawn and, and Perry? Um, if you have them, you can drop them into the uh, the chat if you're shy or if you want to come <laughs> off of uh, come off of mute, you're more than welcome to do so. We do have a few minutes here for questions. I'll open the floor up also if somebody had something that. Um, TNTP folks, if somebody had something on your end uh, that they submitted via chat that you want to, you think would be worth sharing more broadly, we could do that too. But uh, while uh, while I'm waiting on any questions to come in, Brashe, if you if you wouldn't mind to go ahead and drop the uh, the um, survey link in the chat, I'm also going to go ahead and share my screen. And um, looks like we had a question come into the chat there. I'm going to finish this thought though. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen just so that anybody that has to uh, do the recording gets a, uh, gets a look at the, uh, the survey link as well. So let me do that. Uh, so in the chat, uh, the survey, the survey link is in there. And then someone said, so the build on the ninth, is it just for teachers to come and watch? Mm -hmm. Perry and Don, yeah, you want to answer? It's really for the teachers to be able to see what it is so you can understand what your students would actually be participating in. And of course, the opportunity would then be there for you to come and bring your students uh, to, to do that at a later date. Um, and, then, and then a little shameless plug for Walter State. Part of the thing about bringing the students onto campus is we want them to tour the campus and see right. what's available on campus. So we bring them, we bring the students on. They're going to go through Hammer. They're going to eat lunch, but then they're going to be able to experience what's actually going on on college campus. Uh, hey, Perry, if you don't mind me asking, this is Philip Cutcher. You said a school, uh, a particular school was coming on that yeah. date. Uh, do you know which school it is? I absolutely do not. Okay. I was hoping. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're it, I'm from South Grand High School, and I know we're partnering partner with you guys, and we're using yeah. some of your stuff in class, and I didn't know if it was us or not. I, I'm not Philip, sure. I can, I can tell you it is, uh, it's Greenville Middle School in this case. Um, but, you know, that that is sort of the um, – uh the the breaking open of that particular hammer kit hammer set uh for the for the build so uh it'll be broken in and if south green wants to come this spring or or think about something in the fall it, it's available now to do that so uh we can set you up with that if you guys want to come that way yeah okay Philip, sounds good thank you and philip also um you know like if you wanted to attend we could talk about how you could get your students working with some younger students. There's some different ways that, that we can put that together to teach it to high school students or to have a high school teach it to younger students. I'm, okay, thanks. Th there's a, uh, it's not really, it's not a question, but a, uh, but a statement uh, from, from Josh Castle uh, saying that um, he, there was a handful of teachers at his school that um, uh, Mr. Wilson did a session with, and uh, if anybody would have has any interest, uh, reach out to them. And I would just echo that if you if you don't um, if you want to get in contact with Perry and Don, let us know. We'll we'll just link you up right away if you want to learn more. Uh, and for any of our partners, they're more than happy to spend more time talking talking to you about what they're bringing to the table. We only had 30 minute windows because we're trying to be respectful of y'all's time uh, because we know teachers are busy. Um, but uh, they're they're more than happy to share out further with you if you're interested in a partnership with them. Um, so, uh, uh, let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen now. It's long enough for the, for the recording purposes. 
Uh, if you all have any further questions, I would say type quickly now or come off of mute uh, or, or hold your peace for today's session. Uh, just, a, just a reminder that we do have a, another showcase tomorrow. Um, that will be with Civil Air Patrol and with Northeast State Community College. Um, they're both bringing some very cool and interesting, uh, unique things to the table. So, uh, so do attend that. It'll be at the same bad time and the same bad channel. Um, no, that's, that's an old joke there, but, uh, but seriously, it will be at 3.30 PM tomorrow run, running the same time length as today's and the zoom link is actually the same. So we've just recycled that same zoom link for all of our showcases. So you can just click that same zoom link and, uh, and they, that will, uh, will get you in. Um, don't forget to take the survey that uh, it's in the chat um, that will help uh, make sure that we count you as, as having attended today. Um, and uh, again, we just really appreciate your time. We know that uh, folks out in schools are extremely busy. You've got a lot of demands on your time and we appreciate that you could spend uh, an, an hour with us this afternoon. Dawn has dropped her email in the chat. So grab that if you would like to. And uh, if there aren't any more questions, I would, uh, would say we will see you all at a, a future showcase. Thank you.